one second, share talk. Give me one second. Hey, Shirtal, how are you doing? Good, and you? Pretty good, pretty good. I had, I think there's a couple other people coming. Let's give them a couple more minutes. If they're not, we can pretty much, this will be a pretty much a one-on-one, -on -one, pretty much answer all your questions, okay? Okay. All right, just wait a couple more minutes. We'll see. I anticipate there's a couple more people that's coming. They might have like technical difficulties or whatever it be. Okay. One sec. All right, share tall. I don't think there's many other people coming, so it may be just me and you tonight. So let's let's get this underway. Personalized sure. session, share tall. Mm -hmm. All righty. So pretty much, how are you going along in the sort of the the modules? How's everything going along? To be honest, I'm not there for yet, but mm -hmm. I I do my best. Okay. Where where are you right now in the modules? Uh, let me see. You're probably in the very beginning, or yeah, oh, beginning. Analyzing? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's spend today going over the basics. The uh, we won't hop into the te technicals. Is there something you really want to learn at the right now? Like, what's what's on your mind? Do you want? Do you have any interest, or do you want me to go over just the topic that I, I'll do for you? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so up oh, Tega is here. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Let's see if uh, Tega here has any questions. Edgar, another person is trying to log in right now too. So let's okay. get some of the questions underway. Hey Tega, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. How you been? Um, um, I'm doing great. Just watching the videos and trying to like, you know, catch up. Very good. I was pretty much going along with Chiartal. What, where's like your progress in those modules? So I kind of know where exactly we should, we should be heading towards for this Zoom call. Oh, sure. Um, so I'm at the like module two, risk management. Risk management. Uh, remember, like, from our conversation, I told you, like, I may not have time to do it between, like, yesterday and today, but over the weekend, I plan to, like, you know, go hard and, you know, like, watch as much as I can. Very good. So, okay. All right. So yeah. pretty much but I, I do have a few questions, but, you know, I'll, I'll wait to the end of the class and, you know, we'll do it then. Okay. No, but pretty much we can actually go over it right now. I, what I like to pretty much start off with everything, I'd pretty much like to answer everyone's questions. Then we'll hop into a quick sort of like what what I want to go over with you guys, pretty much oh. tailor it. This is tailored to, towards you guys. Okay. All right. Um. So, I mean, hey, I'm a newbie, right? So my questions are going to be like noob questions, but 
Definitely. They're like, well, I do know, like, I was watching, and you're like, um, you know, in case, like, it takes a downturn, they're going to, like, the lock cost average into it. So my mm -hmm. question is, like, how do you calculate, you know, like, because when you dollar cost average, like, you're putting in more money, like, how do you calculate how much money you put in? And then maybe when you start to see the returns, how do you know, like, oh, I'm not still making a loss? You know, I don't want to put, like, you know, $50,000 into something, and then I'm making, like, $3,000 gain, but, you know, I put in, like, 80,000 before just to see the 3,000. So is there a calculation or is there some kind of, like, methodology behind that? Mm -hmm. that's, that's my question good question good question so pretty much what i teach to all of my students when you're mm -hmm. going into a position like i pretty much um emphasize all of our allocations all of the stocks that we're going into it's going to take three to five buys we're never going to go 100 percent into a stock that's going to okay. protect our downside as much as possible mm -hmm. so sort of whatever investment that you plan to go into a stock so say i have apple stock right say it's trading mm -hmm. at about hypothetically speaking at ten dollars right yeah. if i want to buy alibaba i mean if i want to buy apple stock for ten dollars i will not and i plan to put i have that sort of frame in my mind of how much i want to put into the stock right so if i have a thousand dollars right that i want to invest to apple stock I'm not going to go put my whole thousand dollars into the stock. Yeah. Okay. Admit right here. I'm not going to put all of my money into Alibaba or into Apple stock. I'm going to divide it into three to five pieces. Some people, it may be three. Some people may be five. It all depends on the level of confidence that you have in the stock. So if you're really confident in the stock, you can allocate a, th a third of your position into the stock at the time. So what is a third of a thousand? You just pretty much divide it by three. So a thousand yeah. divided by three is three hundred dollars. That's how much mm -hmm. I would initially invest into the stock. And then if the stock goes against you, you have another area. We'll go hop into those more. It pretty much mm -hmm. if a demand level breaks from a technical um, side, if that demand level breaks, it will head towards the next demand level. And once that demand level hits, that's when we start dollar costing averaging in. I'm going to give you okay. an example of that at, um, after after we pretty much answer over over the questions, but I'll give you a real life example of what I would do. All right, great. So I, I know that from what I hear is like there's the method to this, right? Like, okay, like even if it goes down, there is something that we're looking for before we jump in again. All right, yes, cool. Next, All right. next yeah. there'll be multiple yeah. demand levels that we trade off of. You're going to understand a lot more of it once you go through the modules. It'll make a yeah. lot more sense to you. I break it down as simply as possible. But we'll also right. end, uh, go over it tonight. Great, great. All right. So that's my question. Okay. Does it make a little bit more sense to you when I, when I explain yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I understand the methodology. I don't understand how it works, but it, it kind of makes sense, right? Like, you find the next level to jump in because you understand how the trend is going. Yeah. It makes sense. I'll, yeah. I'm going to show you a. I don't know if I can do a chat here, too. Um, there was one of my students, he dollar cost average into one of his position into uh, Alibaba recently, but he, mm -hmm. I can show you a screenshot as well. Let's see. Actually, do you follow my Instagram? Uh, no, you... not, 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 no. I'm on the Facebook thing because I know you were like very strong on the Facebook, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram. I could check, but you know. Okay, let me see. If Instagram I, is I, for the I, young I... people these days. <laughs> I think I posted it into Facebook uh, Facebook as well. Let me let me make sure it's, if it's there. No, it's just pretty much where he sold off in bits and pieces. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right, let's go here. Back into the Zoom. I'll show you. I'll show you pretty much exactly what he ended up doing. But pretty much, mm -hmm. what I, uh, we'll do it in real, real time as well. All no right. Problem. Any other questions, Share Talk, Edgar? Do you have any questions going over the modules? Um, yes, I had um, just a question of your definition of um, dollar cost average. Yeah, pretty much the same question as like Tega. So pretty much, huh. yeah. So what I said before, pretty much with a lot of our positions, we're never going to hundred percent into our positions, right? If we want to go into, say, Apple stock, and it trades at $10 at one time, and then it ends up falling, 
goes to nine dollars. We're gonna buy uh, buy Apple stock at nine dollars, ultimately reducing our shares. I'm gonna show you my screen too. There's a calculator that you guys can use. You can just use basic math as well, but there's also a calculator if you don't want to just do the simple math from it. I'm gonna share my screen with you. Do you see my screen? Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go to a lot of things here. This this is called percentagetools.com. It pretty much shows how much your average would be if you buy it at one sort of at different prices, right? So an example. Let me lower this. Okay. So say Apple stock was trading at ten dollars at one time, right? And you bought a hundred shares of it. It's a thousand dollars that you put into Apple stock currently, right? Mm -hmm. If say the next day it starts trading at nine dollars, it dropped a, a certain amount, right? You can start dollar costing averaging in. So it's now nine dollars. You can decide to put if you want to put another thousand dollars in, right? Let's whatever whatever it. Add. Average buy of nine. If you buy a hundred shares, that's going to be nine hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just calculate what it will be your average, you're going to own two hundred shares now, right? And you bought one at you bought one lot at ten dollars, one lot at nine. Your average buy you put in nineteen hundred dollars. Your average buy now will be nine point five. So for you to make a profit now. If it doesn't need to hit back at 10, as long as it's over 9.5, you're in the, you're in the profits. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can use this dollar cost average calculator as well. Um, you can pretty much go back into uh, the Zoom call, percentage tools.com to go over how much your average cost would be um, after you buy something. All right. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay. No. So pretty much with this call, I want to go over, I had a question with one of uh, my students too, about how exactly, if you don't have a watch list, how do you sort of identify companies to invest in? Why did I choose PayPal, why did I choose Alibaba, right? A lot of it comes mm -hmm. through fundamentals. Before I ever get into any stock, I want to understand a company from its balance sheet. I want to make sure it's a healthy company. And for whatever reason, it has a huge drop in price, whether it's through sentiment, whether it's through some, some sort of news at a certain time that broke down the stock. An example of that that I have a lot for my students is with Boeing stock right now, right? A lot of people here, do you guys all know what happened with Boeing recently? Yes. Um, yeah, the door huge, came out. Exactly. The door came yeah. out. Now there's a lot of negative news. It's dropped like 10, 12% since the news. And I think I heard today that they were stopping building the Boeings. Exactly. Exactly. So now Sentiment, a huge company like Boeing with good numbers, good fundamentals, has broken down due to poor news, right? This is where a lot of retail investors, a lot of people who don't really know anything about the stock market will start selling out of the positions, but this is when we need to find opportunity. I'm not saying buy into Boeing right now, but this is when you start getting interest into the stocks. A lot of stocks that have been broken down. So sort of the stocks that I was looking at was like Alibaba and PayPal, right? We'll look into Alibaba and PayPal, but we'll go over its balance sheet first, right? So from a financial perspective, from a fundamental perspective, we can delve into like Alibaba. Some of the things I want to look into, right? I pretty much did a Google doc for you guys with sort of fundamental analysis that I want you guys to do before you guys enter into any stock. I was recommended to, to look into some stocks um, from a, one of my students, and I pretty much broke down why it was not a good stock. 
stocks that we are always going to be looking at are going to be companies that are larger cap stocks. Why do I choose larger cap stocks? It's more stable. And because it has more volume than lower cap stocks, right? Some of the stocks that he told me to look at was like Solar Edge had an average trading volume of 3 million, right? A lot of the stocks that I'm looking at, the volume that's, um, that's traded per day is in the 10 million plus, right? And we're looking into larger cap, cap stocks because when there's more volume, it trades more in line with its value. So some of the things I want us to look into, like I said, make sure it's a company with positive revenue growth. Assess the company's earnings per share growth. Earnings per share growth is a company's profitability and growth. You want to make sure a company has a positive PE ratio. You want a PE ratio that is not high. You want a low PE ratio, but you don't want a company with a PE ratio of zero. P ratio of zero indicates the company is not profitable. So one of the companies that he told me to look at was Fastly. Right off the bat, I didn't even go too much into it when he asked me to analyze the stock. I was like, P ratio of zero, company was not profitable. It's return on equity, which pretty much ultimately all aligns with whether the company is profitable or not, or not was negative. We're not entering into those stocks. This company is not a company that we'll be looking into. So. Positive P-E ratio, gross and net profits that are healthy, a return on equity that is positive. Return on equity is ultimately how efficiently a company is generating income from the equity investments of its shareholders holders, and pretty much shows how efficiently it's using the equity from its investors to make money in the company. Low debt to equity ratio, right? We don't want a company with a lot of debt especially in an environment where rates are high. If rates are high, a lot of growth companies, especially, are going to be at risk, even bankruptcy. We want a company with a high free cash flow, right? Free cash flow overall, just how much does it cost to uh, operate the company? And overall, pretty much how much are they making in the back end? Overall, it's profitability, how efficiently the company is. We want to ch check the company's management to see it's a competent and we want a trending market that is future proof. So important rules for investing that I want you guys all to have is to always be greedy for strong fundamentals. The market always gives you a second chance to enter. So a lot of people I know when I called, when I said to look into Baba, a lot of the students were entering into Alibaba. A lot of people now want to chase the stock. You guys always have to understand there's always a second chance to enter. Never FOMO, never chase a stock. If you guys ended up chase, chasing the stock, you're, you guys would be end up down in certain Ali, Ali, your Alibaba position right now. Mm -hmm. The stock does not care about your average. So it doesn't care about, hey, you entered into this price. I'm, the market's going to reward you. No, the market does not care about you at all. Like I said, nobody's going to save you from your risky buys. All your buys is directly upon you. Before you get into any buy, you must do a thorough analysis from its financial sheet and going into the stock at the right price, which I will show you guys exactly how. And how do we do that? We're always going to zoom out. We're never going to play shorter time frames. That's where people get faked out. Once we get an overall picture about the stock, we'll pretty much be able to profit and understand what's going on. What is the stock? What is it trying to paint? What picture is it trying to paint? And you cannot always plan for catalyst. You can limit your exposure to risk though. So an example of that with, with Boeing stock, right? You can never really anticipate some breaking news like a, the door going off right pretty mm -hmm. much crashing the stock you can never really plan for that but what you can do is make sure you're getting into the stock at a major demand level which i'll show you guys as well and that will limit your risk as much as possible i do mm -hmm. everything i can to protect our capital we're going to make sure the company is good we're going to be entering at 
demand levels where every institution is going to be loading into the stock. And where do they lo load into stock? They don't load into a stock when sentiment is high. They load into <clears throat> stocks when, at, when it's going down. The thing I want you guys to understand is if you can't handle red days, I'm talking about losing 5 10%, you might as well just buy into a market ETF, buy an index fund, all that kind of stuff, right? You can't handle the red days. You can't control your emotions. You might as well just do that because the market will have volatility. And this, this is where another point comes in from. There will always be irrationality in the short term. So what do I mean by that? With a stock like Alibaba, right? The stock was trading at severely under, severely oversold levels, right? We never know exactly when it's going to start flipping. You have to understand that the short term can stay irrational for a very, very long time. And it's us to control those emotions and weather that storm for us to be profitable. Another rule, yeah. market will always hunt for value and the market will always find it. Like I said, Alibaba was severely, severely oversold, right? The market will eventually know and understand that this stock has been oversold. It's just a matter of time. They will always catch up to its fundamentals. 99% of opinions that you see in the news are noise, right? What was going on with Alibaba at that time? All the press news, all the things that you would Google onto Alibaba was negative. If you look into like CNBC, all this, all these different networks, they're all saying sell your Alibaba shares. It's all noise. You have to block out that noise and be able to critically analyze these stocks yourself. And I'm going to equip you guys with those skills. So b before the really the takeoff with Alibaba, I was telling you guys, right? What was going on with Jim Cramer? Jim Cramer was telling everyone on national, national, national TV to sell your shares. It's China's not investable. And days after, just rocketed it up. And what happened? He went on air saying, you should buy Alibaba now. You should buy China stocks. If I were a hedge fund, I'd be buying it. You just check the dates prior to that. He was telling everyone to sell. So block out the noise. Next, compounding profits is better than leverage. We're never going to leverage. The soon, what, is, what does leverage mean? Pulling out some sort of loan, playing options, right? Any form of leverage you should never be doing. You just need to compound profits, whether it's 2%, whether it's 5%. Just use those profits to continually grow and grow your account. Don't try to just put massive amounts of money into it, hoping that you'll get lucky on one play and pretty much putting yourself in a vulnerable position when you leverage. The moment you leverage, you're playing against time. We, have, we need to have every advantage on our side and we need that advantage of time. Like I've been telling and preaching everyone, know the stocks you own and why you own them. So having conviction in the stock market, market is extremely important. You need to go into every single play understanding you are going to make money in the stock. Every single time I enter a position, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to make money. It's purely just a matter of time. When I got into Alibaba, remember with me, I'm entering positions that are 100, 200, 300, $400,000 positions. I'm entering into massive, massive positions, and you need to have the confidence to stay on the course if things go against you. So if this level failed, right, what ended would have happened? It would have dropped down here. This is about a 15% drop. I knew even if this happened, I never over leveraged myself. I'm, dollar, I'm in a dollar cost average. I'm never going to all in at one single price, hoping that I'm going to get rich quick from this bounce, right? I always, so there's a realistic scenario. I put in $300,000 into this position. It's all relative, right? But it's only a certain amount of how much I put in. If this level would have failed, I would have just dollar cost, costed averaged in. I would have put another $100,000 in. It's all the same. You have 3,000, you'll put another $1,000 in. But regardless, I could have just all in, went in like 400, 
sold for a stock to rocket up here and I would have made a lot more money than I would have if I just put $200,000, $300,000 in. But like I said, this is all about consistency and about protecting our portfolio. I only put in 20, 30% of how much I want to put in. If this level failed, I would have just bought down here. It all happened with me having conviction in the stocks I owned. I knew from a fundamental perspective, its numbers were excellent. It was trading at crazy low in valuations. Its free cash flow is at like 14%, which is extremely profitable. And if you compare it to its industry, it was severely oversold, right? I compared um, out to Alibaba to what if it's what it's its U.S. counterpart? It's Amazon. Amazon. Exactly. You compare those two, you can see that it pretty much has about the same numbers, but one trades severely depressed, one's at all time high. I knew for a fact it was oversold. And now I pretty much went into a demand level and I profited from that. 13, good management saves companies, right? You want a company that has a strong leader. What happened with PayPal at the very beginning that caused its crash? Its prior CEO, Daniel Shulman, he was lackadaisical in his approach to, in the uh, company. The companies were shrinking in its margins, was losing a lot to its competition, MasterCard, Visa, etc. And what happened recently? He left his position. He got lackadaisical. Didn't really want to be CEO anymore. New CEO, hot CEO came in. He's ready. He's pretty much reinvigorated the company. He's pretty much, there's a thing called buyback program as well. You guys understand the buyback program? Yeah. So the We're stock there. market, yeah. For those that are not too familiar with it, the stock market operates off of supply and demand. And when there's a buyback program, the company itself will buy shares of their own company. They typically do it at severely oversold levels which where PayPal was sitting at. And ultimately by buying those shares, they reduce the supply in the market. And by reducing the supply, what usually happens with uh, any sort of price with anything, right? Supply goes down, Oops. the price will go up. Dude. Exactly. Dude. Yeah. So PayPal has a huge, huge buyback program. And same thing with Alibaba, huge buyback program. Um, so those were things that I look into when I go inside, uh, when I purchase a company. So return on equity, I we talked about that. Return on equity, return on assets, return on investment are crucial. Overall, what is it saying here? It's just making sure that the company is profiting. Make sure the company that you're going into is a functioning company. It's not going the wrong way. It's not losing money. I know a lot of, even a lot of my students too, tell me they're into stocks like Lucid, right? Never, never would I enter in a company like that. It's, it loses millions on every single car it makes. In terms of management, the CEO takes mm -hmm. all of the money home. It's not a profitable company. But, oh. but yet a lot of unsavvy investors that don't really know anything, they just know Lucid's a big name, so they invest into it. They lose money into it. Margins matter, right? Over time, a company will have shrinking margins if there's competition or whatever it may be. What does that ultimately mean? Profitability goes down. So that's not a, tre a good trend in, in a company. And the last but most important, if I can teach you guys anything in the market, you can know all the technicals, you can know all this kind of stuff, but the one thing you must control is your emotions. I want you guys, when a stock goes down, you guys need to... I want you guys, when a stock goes down, you guys need to get more bullish about a position. You need to be thinking that it's an opportunity. A lot of retail investors, when a stock goes down, they become scared. We capitalize on their emotions. This whole market, it all operates on emotions, right? How many times have you guys invested into a stock 
or got into an option contract or whatever it is, and you had to sell out. And after you sold out, days later, weeks later, months later, if you had just held, you would have been profitable. I guarantee you, if you have invested or traded in the past, that has happened. We're going to always control our emotions. We're never going to let the market take advantage of us. They will do their best to get you guys emotional and sell your positions. You guys have to view everything as manipulation. So those are the essentials with investing that I want you guys to really hone. And now we'll hop into sort of what I do from A through Z with Alibaba. I've gone over this before, but we have new students here and we'll pretty much reinforce it to you guys. So big website that I'd like to use is macrotrends.net. It pretty much gives you all the financials that you guys need. This and Finviz. So this is a Finviz map. This is a home screen. You can choose the stock that you want to go into. We'll evaluate Alibaba. Things that I always look into, right? Price to earnings ratio. This pretty much outlines for you whether it's good or not. It's green when it's good. When it's red, it's not too good. Pretty simple, but like I said, price to earnings ratio of 10 is extremely, extremely good. And I'll show you guys how you guys use price to earnings. You always want to compare it to its historical price to earnings, right? It recently had a ramp up. So if you guys look into its RSI, it's getting more in the neutral, getting more towards the overbought zone. But like I said, an RSI under 30 considered oversold and an RSI of over 70 considered overbought. So price to earnings is good. Forward PE is good. All of these things are good. Free cash flow. If you guys are ever unsure about anything, go into here and you can pretty much identify it. Let's go into its revenue. So this is a company with steady revenue, right? You see a divot here, but you see still rising. You want to compare its price to earnings ratio. So this is the stock price over time. Stock was trading at 290, currently trading at 73. Look at its price to earnings ratio. Way below what it usually trades off of. So you can just eyeball it and see that it trades at a price to PE ratio of roughly around 20, right? Even after the recent run up, you can see how severely oversold it, this company is. PE ratio of 10.36. Simple Google searches you guys can look at. Actually, I have the free cash flow for you guys over here as well. You can see its price to its free cash flow has been decreasing. So price has been decreasing. Free cash flow has been going the other way. Overall, a severely oversold company. So now we'll hop into the technicals. One more thing I want to go over to you guys. Let's see if it shows it here. Price ratios. So this is the shares outstanding. So what do you guys see here? Remember what I said about the share buyback program? Decreasing. What does that do with a current stock price? When shares decrease, stocks will inevitably go up. So after all these research and understanding the company, I want to hop into the stock. So what do I do in terms of, for, let's clear out everything. I'm going to show you guys how I do my technical analysis and show you guys how I would enter and exit stocks. Like I said, we're going to use any sort of trading platform. I use TradingView. You guys will always trade into the larger time frames, the daily, the weekly, the monthly. 
I keep it simple. We'll go into the daily. Like I said, we don't touch the four hour. We don't touch the 45, the one minute, 15 minute, et cetera. Those timeframes leave you too much vulnerable to getting faked out. We always get the bigger picture. So we're going into the daily. I'm zooming out. I'm just looking at the stock from an outside perspective. Look at how oversold this company is. You guys have gone through the modules and saw the emotions with trading, right? The capitulation levels and et cetera. Have you guys seen that? Oh, like, not me. I just started today. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we'll go over that too then today. So. Yeah. This is a good one, but I want to go over cycle. This is a really good infographic of what goes on in a stock. So this happens all the time in the stock market, right? So what usually happens, there's hope, there's optimism, belief, thrill, and euphoria. Think about the times when like crypto, right? Or the the peak bull market when everything was going up after even after covid and they stimulated the economy the stock market just kept going up and up and up whether you were buying amazon whether you were buying a poor fundamental company a lot of people were making money no matter what stock they pick things were going up so what happened during these times a lot of companies a lot of poor fundamental companies were trading at valuations they shouldn't even be trading at People at the time were throwing loans. They were pulling out loans to get into sort of stocks and trying to maximize as much money as possible. What ends up happening? The stock market ends up falling down. What usually happens when it first have its first big fall? A lot of people just think, hey, the market had an insane rally. It needs some time to cool off. So they, they buy into these dips and they get caught out even more. And continually dips. Now people get more anxious. Like I said, people were, were right around this time were pulling out loans, whatever it is, they're in off, short dated option contracts and things continually fall down. They're scared of getting margin called now and things keep going down. They deny, they have denial. They think they're into good companies. Things fall down even more. Now they're starting to panic and eventually they get capitulated. They had to sell out of their positions. Think about all the times when you had to sell out your positions or any of your stocks. Things just felt like it was never ending days and days, weeks and weeks, months of selling. You are absolutely exhausted emotionally. So you end up selling and then you get angry about the stock market. I never want to enter the stock market again. It's all manipulation, right? And then surely enough, there's a period of depression, but surely enough, things always rise back. Things start to rise and you're like, there's no way after the market has been selling off like this. It's just to, to fool people in, to buy into the market. And surely enough, the cycle repeats itself over and over again. So let's take a look and compare this stock to Alibaba. Boom. Pretty uncanny, right? Almost looks exactly alike. And we're pretty much entering into period of capitulation again. So all the way down, this is from if you're looking at the chart, this is 2020. If you're looking all the way down there, things peaked around this time and just continually fell down for years and years and years and years until we reach capitulation. So people here have been selling out these positions. This is where I find opportunity. And you need to do this with companies that have good fundamentals. So what do I like to do once I, uh, I'm in a company that a lot of people have capitulated at? I will start to get the bigger picture. What's been going on recently, right? With the stock, I want to get an overall trend. Is the stock trading in sort of a wedge? Is it trading in a channel? Whatever it is, what will I do? So we'll start with identifying peaks and valleys. So the top, we'll try to connect as much areas of the top as possible and as much bottoms as possible. So here, Roughly, oh, I have my extension on. Let me turn that off. Here. 
and people's sort of technical analysis with drawing these trend lines are always going to be different. No one's is exactly the same, but I'll show you exactly why it does not really matter. We just want to get an overall picture and then I'll start tinkering away, dissecting it even more. But I just want to get an overall picture. So roughly trading around here, you want to find areas of where it pretty much has as much points as possible. This area is where I want to draw my, draw my line, right? Now you want to connect all the bottom ones, right? So we'll go here till about here is trading in sort of some sort of wedge. Actually, I'm going to extend this over here. So even dated from back here, we were trading around this wedge. Every time it has hit around this trend, it jumps up. As you can see, we're trading at the bottom of the wedge, and that's how we captured a big, big jump in Alibaba. 10%, 15% for some, but I'll delve into the stock even more. So after I got an overall image of what the stock looks like, I wanna do a Fibonacci. So like I said, with Fibonacci, some of you guys are new, you haven't gotten to the technicals yet, but what happens with stocks? Stocks don't go straight up. Stocks will always go up, down, up, down, like the up, down, up, down. There's no elevator in any stock. Never trades that way. There's going to be buying, there's going to be selling, there's going to be buying, there's going to be selling. How do you know where to buy a stock? How do you know where it's going to retrace? This is where you utilize Fibonacci retracements. So with Fibonacci retracement, you want to identify a clear trend. You want to identify higher and higher highs or lower and lower lows. For our purposes, we're always going to be buying stocks. So we want to find higher and higher highs. Where do I see higher and higher highs? Here to here. Here, higher, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. So from here, we'll draw our Fibonacci from here till about here. So what did I teach? Uh, you guys haven't gone that far yet, but I was telling everyone, where should you be buying a lot of these stocks? Fibonacci, the golden zone, the 0.5 to the 0.618 is a very, very strong level that is often respected in the stock market. And as you can see here, every time it touches this level, you can see a huge rebound in the stock. Let's delve a little bit closer into it. Just using a Fibonacci, let's see how much you guys can capture. Right? If I had entered in a stock around this Fibonacci up to this level, next to the next Fibonacci, that's 11%. It doesn't look like much from this graph, but that's 11%. Imagine putting $100,000, making 10% of that, a significant, significant amount of money or whatever you guys are trading at, right? You guys are, you may be trading with like $3,000, right? Many of you are trading roughly around that range. 10%, what does that make you? $300. You keep finding these plays over and over. You compound those gains and you're able to really build a six figure portfolio really, really easily. Once you're able to find that this is a consistent way that the stock market operates. So that's right. There's another sort of percentage you're able to gain from here to one Fibonacci. That's a 26% gain. Huge, huge gains that you're able to make in the stock market. So what did I see once I reached around here when I entered into the stock? We also want to go find confluences. So what are confluences? Confluences are other technical indicators that support our thesis, right? So what did I see in Alibaba? Why did I tell a lot of people to pretty much it was a good buy at that certain price point? Why was I confident to put $300,000 into this position? So. We were at number one, a lower end of our trend line. We were sitting roughly around here. It reached capitulation levels. A lot of people, the stock market knows you're trading off of trend lines. It goes out of it for a brief moment and just retraces it just to get people who are leveraging positions, who are pulling loans or short dated contracts to get in the position to sell out your positions. We are foolproof. Like I said, we're never going to sell out of the positions. We are always playing on the safe side. We're playing stocks. We're not leveraging and we're allocating three to 5% into the play. So 
what did I see here? Lower end of the wedge, we're seeing high amounts of volume here. A lot of institutions are buying here. And a secret that you guys can use is identifying areas of demand. To draw an area of demand, you would draw it from the top of the body all the way to the bottom. So what do we see here? Let's see if this area is an area of major demand. Area of major demand meaning an area where a lot of people are going to be buying into, right? From historically speaking, if it hit around this level, what ended up happening? You can see that it was sitting in an area where every time it hits around here, it zooms up. Area of major demand. Even, even before it hits here, area of major demand. Even all the way prior. This is 2016. Every time it hits here, huge, huge upward movement in the stock. Huge area of support, huge area of demand. A thing that I can want to teach you guys is that that's one confluence. Another confluence is being very far away from your moving averages. Two moving averages that I want to go over with you guys are the 50 moving average and the 200 moving averages. Let's delve into that. You guys don't know much about the moving averages, but we'll see how the stock market reacts to it. So pretty much, I just want to quickly go over this and then we'll go over quickly go into moving averages and we'll pretty much answer any questions you guys have at the end. So why did I enter the stock? Major area of demand, lower end of the wedge, lots of volume over here. A lot of people were buying into the position under the scene. Not a lot of people were seeing this. And I saw an RSI divergence. RSI is an oscillator, a moving oscillator that tells you if a stock is oversold or if it's overbought. So what happens when a stock is going down? It, means it's, it should mean that it's more oversold. But in the oscillator, it showed that from here to here, it was going, the uh, RSI was signaling getting more overbought. That is a divergence. And with all those confluences, I'm confident that the stock was going to rock it up. A uh, sort of more elementary sort of topic that I want you guys to go over are the moving averages. This is a lesson on price action, a quick lesson on price action for you guys. So. Give me any sort of stock. I'll show you guys that I'm not cherry picking any stock. I'll show you a little like a price action sort of secret in the stock market. You guys have any stock you guys want to throw out? I, I have some. Sure. What stock? Uh, uh, real platform ROT. Riot? Yeah, right. Right. Good. Okay. I know this company, actually. Like I said, not a company that I would go for. This is a lower cap stock. The stock is trading around $10. But regardless, no matter what sort of stock you pick, the market will always respect these moving averages. Like I said, this is the 50 moving averages. This is the 200 moving average. Any time the 50 moving average crosses over the 200, that's called a golden cross. And any time 50 moving average crosses under, the 200 moving average, that's called a death cross. So you guys remember, this is a golden cross now. Anytime it crosses over, consider it a golden cross, and it means there's major upside in the stock that's going to happen. So let's like a, let's take a look. This is a stock you picked. Let's take a look. Every time this crosses this, you can see huge momentum into the stock. If you mm -hmm. had entered the stock from here to here, Look how much was possible, 133% into the mm -hmm. stock. Anytime there's a cross from this to this, huge upside is going to happen. Anytime, inversely, anytime this crosses under, there will be downfall into the stock. So from this to here, 17% loss into the stock. Anytime it crosses over again, look at that. Any stock you do, if, these, if there is a cross, there will be a great momentum into the stock. If it travels downwards, there will be a lot of downward momentum into the stock. Let's look into like Apple. 
let's take a look at these moving averages. When it crosses over, look at all the momentum that has traveled ever since it crossed over, right? When it crossed downwards, look at all the down that happened over here, right? When this crossed down over here, look at all the downward pressure right here. A lot of losses. So that is a basic sort of understanding and analysis of these golden crosses for you guys. You can see how often it gets respected. And why, what do I use, right? Understanding this, I, if, a, if there is ever a cross, I would be very hesitant to go for a long position. We would wait for a huge area of demand for us to enter into the stock. So be very careful when the stock is trading under a moving average. Wait till it hits an area of major demand. All righty. Any questions that you guys have? Did I go too fast? I know it's going to be a lot for you guys right now because you guys haven't gone through most of the modules, but that is what sort of understanding that I'm going to preach to you guys to understand. This will be the, sort of like a lot of your first ones. A lot of you guys are just entering into these modules. So it'll be really fresh to you guys, but that's sort of an accompany from A through Z of what we're going to be doing when we're, when we're analyzing stocks. Does that sort of uh, make sense to you guys? You guys need me to go over any sort of topics from that? So uh, you're using trading view, right? Trading view, yes. Okay. Yeah. It's a free platform. Anyone can use it. It has all the technical indicators you you, you need to use. Okay. Where do you uh where do you trade off of, Cher, Paul? Robinhood or yeah, ju just Robinhood. Yeah, Robinhood. Okay, all right. Any qu other questions that you guys have? And share to all. When you go over the modules for the technical indicators, if you yes. have difficulty doing what I'm doing, charting like I'm doing, message me. Okay, I'll be able to answer all of your questions. Okay, do not okay. ever do not ever hesitate to ask me any questions. I'm I'm here to make sure that you guys succeed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Tega, how was uh, this sort of first uh, meeting for you? I know it's a pretty, it's a lot to take in for your first sort of lesson. Were you able to pretty much attain anything from this, or you pretty much had to like pretty much look over this again? Tega might not be here right now. Edgar, how was it? You're still muted, by the way. All right. Share Todd, any other questions? Or you pretty much you pretty much uh did you get everything? Were you able to get any like sort of benefit from this sort of meeting? Yes, yes. Okay. All I like to do is catching up some more. Yep. Yeah. Where in the modules are you? Did you say you were at? I let me see. I'm at the uh, step four. How to make money and not fail as a trader. Okay. All right. So still some pretty much some stuff more a lot more stuff to go over in the modules. But you'll understand yes, yes. this will be like sort of your brief sort of overview of it all. And then as you go through the modules, you can look back at the recording and see how it correlates to everything that I was teaching. All right, Chertal, I want you to pretty much go through the modules, right? I want to get you in, in a play soon, okay? So I want yes. you to get pretty much get things rolling, okay? I yes. want you to really understand this. What about you, Edgar? How's everything? Yes, I'm I'm glad to recording this so I could go over it again. It's mm -hmm. it's um good info. Yeah. So pretty much let's get for everyone here. I want everyone to pretty much try to go through the modules as effectively and as fast as possible so we can get you guys into a lot of these plays. There's a lot of opportunity in the stock market, but like I said, there's always opportunity in the market. But I want you guys to pretty much get things rolling, okay? Yeah. So I have a question. So basically, when you do all this analysis and technical and 
analysis and trading trading um basically you're looking at about two to five percent gain correct yeah we're not like i said a lot of people in options trading a lot of people lost money because they got into those option contracts they try to make 50 100 percent in a short amount of time that is not sustainable the way you really make money in the stock market is by compounding those five, 10% gains, right? You're more com you get, end up more confident in the market so you can put, invest more money into the market, right? Some of you guys might start with only a thousand dollars, right? But you do have more capital to invest. Later on, you're going to get to a level of confidence where I'm okay with putting another $5,000 into the market because I know this system works, right? When I first began trading in the stock market, I was only trading with about a couple hundred dollars, right? But as soon as I understood that this system was making me money, I started putting all my money into it. So everything that I was making from my nine to five, I was putting back into the stock market because I knew it was a way, a vehicle for me to grow my money. And, and I knew that once you pretty much get the whole system, you're like, okay, I can put a lot of more money into it. Imagine putting $100,000 into a position and only ma and making 10%. That's like a, a significant amount of money for you guys to make, right? Yes. Yeah. So a simple 5% play on $100,000, once you guys get into that level, is $5,000. And making, making, imagine making $5,000 in a day over time, right. right? It's ridiculous. Once you guys get more confident in this system and you're able to invest more money, that is how I, you guys are able to really, really push the needle and make a lot of money, right? I pretty much started with a couple hundred, started compounding, put more money into it. 10,000 turned to 20,000, 20,000 turned to 40,000, 40,000 eventually turned to 100, 100,000 eventually turned to 200, and eventually... I kept doing the same thing over and over again to be to become a millionaire, which is where I hope yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you guys to I'm gonna get you guys the skills that you guys need to really grow your account. Okay. Thank you. Trust the process, and you guys will make money. This isn't a a sprint. This is a marathon. Okay, but that's the only way to reliably make money in the stock market. All right. Any other questions? Anything, uh, Tega? I think you're still muted. I don't know if Tega's still here. Regardless, like I said, go through those modules. Any questions that come up, either go ask me through Slack or save it for these questions at the end of the week, okay? I, I want you guys to pretty much by the end of the next week, go through most of the modules, okay? Because a lot of the things I'll be teaching, it'll make a lot more sense to you. The modules I do, I break it down as easily as possible. But if you still have questions, I'll be here at the end of every week and we'll start, we'll keep incorporating more and more lessons uh, so that so you guys can conquer this market, okay? Okay. Thank okay. You. All right. Stay Stay diligent, okay? Really trust this process. I'm going to get you guys to become successful. You've seen it with all my prior students. They, you even saw the, call, the, the play that I made just recently. It does work. Trust me in this. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. No, any, any other questions? If there's no other questions, we'll pretty much end it here, and I'll see you guys next week, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Everybody, take care, okay? okay? Have a good good rest of your night. Get through those modules, okay? Good night. All right, good night.